Welcome back. Now we're going to spend some time talking about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and how encouraging a growth mindset can encourage students, particularly underrepresented students, to enter and stay in computing fields. So if you're not familiar with the terms, a fixed mindset reinforces the idea that intelligence and talent are fixed at birth versus a growth mindset that adheres to the idea that intelligence and talent can be developed and grown. So this chart indicates results from a nationwide survey looking at faculty and graduate students in 30 disciplines. They rated items on a scale of one to seven with personal perspectives of that field um, and on four questions related to field specific ability beliefs. These questions included um, rating on whether or not a top scholar in the discipline requires a special aptitude that just can't be taught, whether or not if you wanna succeed in the discipline, hard work alone just won't cut it, that you need to have an innate gift or talent. The idea that with the right amount of effort and dedication, anyone can become a top scholar in the field. And when it comes to the discipline, the most important factors for success are motivation and sustained effort. Raw ability is secondary. So as you can see, those first two mindsets If you're not familiar with these mindsets, a fixed mindset adheres to the belief that intelligence and talent are fixed at birth versus a growth mindset, which adheres to the belief that intelligence and talents can be developed and grown um, and encouraged and nurtured among students. This slide indicates the results of a nationwide survey of faculty and graduate students in 30 disciplines. So these faculty and graduate students um, rated these ideas on a scale of one to seven. And those ideas are that being a top scholar in their discipline requires a special aptitude that just can't be taught, which indicates a fixed mindset. Um, they also rated whether or not, if you want to succeed in the discipline, hard work alone just won't cut it. You need to have an innate gift or talent, also representative of a fixed mindset. Um, or the idea that with the right amount of effort and dedication, anyone can become a top scholar in the discipline, more representative of a growth mindset. And they also rated the idea that when it comes to the discipline, the most important factors for success are motivation and sustained effort. Raw ability is secondary. Again, representative of a growth mindset. So you can see the results here. Um, it looks at the number or percentage of female PhDs in the fields um, and whether or not the field has more of a dominant fixed mindset or more of a dominant growth mindset among the faculty and graduate students who are currently in that field. And you can see where a variety of different um, disciplines fall and also how fields that have more of a fixed mindset also seem to have a fewer number or fewer percentage of female PhDs in the field particularly for computer science and engineering fields. You see them right here, moving towards more of a fixed mindset, and again, lower percentages of female PhDs. In a fixed mindset, people believe their basic qualities, like their intelligence or, or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success, potentially without effort. So this is the idea that if you're really good at something, you shouldn't have to work at it. If you have to work at it, 
it means you're not smart or that the field is not a good fit for you. If you struggle or make mistakes, it must prove that you don't have it or don't belong. Um, that way, or with that mindset, people tend to hide mistakes, which interferes with learning and improvement. And you can see particularly for um, students, computer science students, um, underrepresented students, students who might um, feel a lack of belonging or lack of confidence, you know, like how this can really um, negatively impact their, their learning and their ability to stay in a field. In a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. The brains and talent are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Virtually all great people have had these qualities. When we use words like smart rather than experienced, we create a culture where students think they have to be infallible, which can be the enemy of learning, like I just mentioned. Even Einstein wasn't Einstein until he put in dedicated years of learning. Alfred Binet, the developer of the IQ test, had a radical growth mindset, creating curricula that would make kids smarter. And he was enraged when Americans started using his tests to measure intelligence as a fixed trait. So again, what we're getting at here is that a growth mindset really cultivates learning um, and that practice really cultivates learning. Um, just like if you play a sport or a musical instrument, it's practice that makes you better. When students believe that they can get smarter, they understand that effort makes them stronger. Therefore, they put in extra time and effort, and that leads to higher learning and higher achievement. Recent advances in neuroscience have shown us that the brain is far more malleable than we ever knew. Research on brain plasticity has shown how connectivity between neurons can change with experience and practice. With practice, neural networks grow new connections, strengthen existing ones, and build insulation that speeds transmission of impulses. These neuroscientific discoveries have shown us that we can increase our neural growth by the actions we take, such as using good strategies, asking questions, and practicing. So if you believe your brain can grow, you behave differently, which ultimately leads to higher achievement. And this is what we want to see among our students. Unfortunately, our current cultural stereotypes indicate that computing is something that generally particular kinds of men should do, and that computing ability and other related abilities such as math are innate and fixed. So what can you as a teacher or administrator or post-secondary professional do about that? A good place to start is by taking steps to encourage a growth mindset in your classroom or among any students you interact with. Researchers have found that teacher behaviors have a big impact on student mindset and that the feedback that teachers give their students can either encourage them to choose a challenge and increase achievement or look for any easy way out. For example, studies on different kinds of praise have shown that telling students they are smart encourages a fixed mindset, whereas praising hard work and effort cultivates a growth mindset. So again, when students have a growth mindset, they take on challenges and learn from them, therefore increasing their abilities and achievements. And one of our resources actually focuses on how to give achievement or how to give feedback that encourages a growth mindset. So that's an overview of growth mindset versus fixed mindset and why encouraging a growth mindset for your students and developing one yourself is really important to achievement and learning for your students. Um, so now we encourage you to Use that knowledge and go forth and grow, both for yourselves as well as your students.